All right, so in the last video, we took a look at how I like to manually DS my vocal performances and things like voiceovers as well. In this video, what I thought we would do is take a look at the brand new DSer plugin. Now, the plugin, the DSer that I've been using for the last, I don't even know, four years, five years, um, has been the Pro DS by FabFilter. It's just a great sounding DSer. It's got a really great starting point and it's very transparent and invisible. That being said, my first method of working is always to do a manual pass of DSing first. But there are some times when I need to fire off a super quick mix where I just don't have the time. Um, in a perfect world, I would probably manually DS and then I might even have uh, a DSer plugin uh, first in the chain or second in the chain after I've done some subtractive EQ or something like that. And I might do a tiny bit of DSing on a very specific frequency, and then I might compress things further. And then the very end of the chain, I might have another plugin. So you say, well, that's a lot of stages of DSing. You know, you're you're manually DSing things first in the chain, and then you go to another plugin and do a little bit at maybe a different frequency. And then after all your you've hyper compressed everything, parallel compression, then you put another DSer. That's a lot. But here's the thing. I might only be knocking like a dB off, right? I might only be doing like two dBs of manual DSing and then go into a DS or another one. But what I thought we would do is just take a look at how to use this. Now, the first thing I want to mention is you can go to help and you can open up the Studio One reference manual. And if you open that up, I've scrolled over to the dynamic section here in the DSer. This gives you the basics in terms of frequency, adjust the center frequency used to target sibilant noises for reduction, shows you it's variable from two to 12K. Uh, listen, similar to the key listen function on the compressor when activated, we can solo. We have metering. A reduction controls the threshold point at which the, the DSer begins to reduce the selected frequency. Shape, we have narrow and wide, and range, we have full and gentle. So compression may occur over the entire dynamic range of the signal, and then this is prevents compression from reducing the signal beyond uh, minus 6 dB. So... I will say this, this is something where you're going to have to mess around with this and get an understanding of how it works. But let's just cover the basics of it right now because it's actually a very, very usable DSer. And I think that when you start, or even not when you start, but let's say that you forget you know, an iLock key or you forget a license or you're working on a different system, you need to be able to have some tools that can get you moving quickly. So in that case, let's go ahead and play this. The first thing we can do is let's take a look at the listen in solo. This is a great way to be able to kind of focus in on the actual frequencies that you want to be applying the processing to. Now also take a listen when we're using the listen button, take a listen to the wide and narrow. Notice how this affects what we're hearing. So if we go back to this explanation over here, uh, let me close this plugin for a moment. Uh, we have narrow, three band mode, compression is only applied to a narrow band, signal below and above the active band remains untouched. And then we have wind, wide, which is a two band mode, compression is applied to the entire high frequency signal with a lower frequency range remains untouched. So. This really depends on how you want to work. And at the end of the day, you may have varying different results based on the different voices, based on whether it's a male voice or a female voice. But it's really important to understand how to uh, make these adjustments. Okay, so we have narrow and we have wide, and then we have full, and then we have gentle. So with the gentle, we saw that it's, it's never going to apply more than 6 dB. Let's go ahead and listen to full for a moment. And I want to dial something in quickly here. Arguably, there's a couple different points that I could choose. I definitely, there's a bit of like brittleness to my voice that sits around like 4,000. Okay, so here we are going but that doesn't hurt my ears. It starts to hurt my ears when it moves up to about seven. And then again, once I get past eight. Okay, so here we are going to be testing with the so, so around 7.37. Okay, so let's go higher. So arguably, there's a couple different frequencies that we could choose. We could choose either the 7 one or we could choose the 10 one. Now also, it's going to be different depending on whether we're listening to narrow or wide.
Okay. This is a matter of opinion. In some cases, you really want to just focus in a very, very specific section. But in other cases, you actually want it to be a little bit wider. And, and sometimes that can be more transparent. So now that we've kind of used the listen function, we've dialed in a frequency, let's choose the 10K frequency. And let's choose, let's make a commitment as to whether we're using narrow or wide. Okay, I'm going to choose wide, and then we have the range full or gentle. I'm going to probably leave it on full. So I'm going to come out of listen mode now, and now let's hop into solo. This is what they call uh, a delta. It, you're listening to what's being removed, right? So you're, you're kind of isolating the artifacts or the sibilants that are going to be reduced. And this can be another way to further refine your frequencies. Based on whether we have a wide or narrow shape, we can adjust the frequencies while we're listening in solo. And for this, I might even go real crazy with this. Okay, so there's the 10K. Let's listen to narrow. That's a little bit too focused for me. Sorry, let me rephrase that. The narrow, um, it was taking out a lot, but when I put it on the wide shape, I'm just hearing that top end sizzly stuff that I want to get rid of being removed. Let's leave it in wide and full and let's adjust the frequency. Okay, that's actually pretty nasty too. So let's just make a decision and say that we're gonna go with this frequency, we're gonna go with wide, and we're gonna go with full. Now I wanna reiterate, use the listen and toggle between narrow and wide, and that'll help you kind of dial in the exact frequency. Then we can hop into the solo mode, and we can listen to what's being removed, and in some cases you might wanna increase your reduction amount so you're really hearing it. And then I'm going to hop out of solo. And the idea here that I generally use the same rules for de that I would apply if I was doing manual de which is like I go for somewhere between three to six. Okay, so here we are going to be testing a de So she sells seashore. She sells seashore. Okay, I'm getting a bit of a lisp there. So I could do this or we could leave the uh, reduction range where it is and we could switch over to gentle. Okay, so here we are going to be testing a de So she sells seashore. The advantage of going with the gentle range setting is that you could, for example, be real aggressive with your reduction amount. Okay, so here, and you will never go any further than that minus 6 dB. It's, it's just kind of like a balancing scale. It's whatever sounds better. But I think what I'll probably do is go into full and, and try to fine tune my reduction. Okay, so here, we are going to be testing a de -esser. So she sells seashore, she sells seashells by the seashore. If she sells seashells by the seashore, then how many seashells can she sell by the seashore? Okay, so this is the basics of using this de right? It's a very, very capable de -esser. And we have the listen functionality with our different frequencies. And then we have the solo functionality with the, the, with the reduction amount. We can switch shape so we can have that delta mode where we're listening to just what's being removed. Um, we can kind of focus in on trying to make choices of, this, of which shape we're using and which frequency. And then we have our ranges. Like I said, the full range. Be real specific about your reduction amount. And then the gentle you kind of get a hall pass because you could have your reduction amount be like super aggressive. Okay, so here we are going, it's never gonna take away more than 6 dB, but it might be doing it all the time when some of these S's don't need that much reduction, where some of them might need two, and then the others might need the full six. So it's really just about getting, you know, uh, making the most out of all these parameters, getting them to work together. And like I say, this is going to be different whether you're working with a female artist, a male artist, or whether you're working with a uh, voiceover. In this case, I'm right on top of this mic. I'm doing like 70 or 8 dBs of compression on the way in. I've got no EQ, but this is going through an RC500, so it's like a super crispy preamp that's like a really bright, vibrant sound. 
But I think this de-esser is completely usable. I could use this no problem if I had to. And I honestly think that using this de-esser in combination with a bit of manual de-essing, either by using clip gain or event gain, you could get great results. If you're starting out or you forgot a plugin license, is this usable? Absolutely, 100%. Anyways, a little bit more detailed than I thought it would be, but I hope that this video is useful for anybody who's trying to make the most out of working with the stock Personas DSer. Hope you enjoyed this content and we will catch you in the next one. Cheers.